Hey, Pumpkin. What you doing? Hanging out in the back of the chair? Supervising? Got a lot to look out for over here. Kitten. She's hyped. This thing's been bouncing off the walls for like the last 20 minutes. Literally. I'm not joking. Actually bouncing off the walls. Yeah, I'm talking about you. In a crazy floof. Yes, you are. Pumpkin being a good big sister. Uh, plants. You don't need to look at the cats. Got plants in the mail. <laughs> I'm gonna blame my voice cracking on the fact that I was just outside and it was four degrees. It's cold. Great time to order plants. I shouldn't have, this was a mistake. Go out to the gross space, get this thing popped open and look at what's inside. Boxes. It's a little beat up, but yeah, that should be okay. Mailman brought this right to the door, so it didn't sit out in the cold, which I really, really appreciate. Wasn't actually expecting them to ship it out, but here we are. Hertz Gardens. On Amazon, Etsy, and Hertz.com. Also Walmart. I've ordered from Hertz many times on the channel, whether it be through Amazon or Walmart. I don't think I've ever ordered through Etsy, but maybe I have. Generally, the only differences that it comes down to is where things are on sale and the shipping. We'll talk about that at the end. For now, I really just want to dive in here and get this opened up and see how everything is looking. This is the time of year when I typically am ordering smaller plants to put into things like terrariums and smaller plant arrangements. Hertz always has a great selection of small plants for terrariums, specifically small begonias. The order ended up being a lot bigger than I had planned on. I was just gonna order a few begonias, maybe a dwarf fuchsia while I was at it. And uh, when I got to my shopping cart, noticed everything was 50% off. It didn't say 50% off, but the math wasn't math and my total was 50% of what it should have been. Of course, went back onto the site and did a lot more shopping and now Here's a box of plants. I don't, ooh, some of them don't work too good. I'm already disappointed. Yeah, the plants, they're not good, obviously. I didn't think they would ship the order out right when I placed it. I figured they would wait. It was only gonna delay things by like a week and it would have been safe to ship them. None of these plants are secured in here. They're just loose. So all those small plants have cold damage, obviously, but they're also just smashed because these have just been tumbling around inside of these boxes. Look at all the small plants that are down here laying underneath these bigger pots. That's not normal. This is not what I'm used to from Hertz. I'm, a, I'm pretty disappointed. Colder there than it is here, just about colder there than it is just about anywhere right now with this Arctic blast that was going on. So I don't, what was the plan here? There's a heat pack, but that's not doing any good if you don't line the package with some foil. And there's holes in it too. At least it didn't sit out on the front porch. The postman brought it right to the door and handed it to me. That was nice of him. He didn't have to do that. Maybe that reduced some of the damage. It could maybe be worse. Okay. All right. Apparently doing this two weeks in a row. Another bad plant unboxing. It, you, it happens. <laughs> they look so bad. Here I was really excited to unbox these beautiful plants and instead just have a table full of mush and crunch. It's the next day from when I opened these up. In last week's video, last Wednesday's video, I had a bit of a rant with an Etsy seller. And I noticed that there were a good amount of comments from people saying that I should have demanded a refund or called my credit card company. Lots of people thinking that I had been screwed over financially. And that isn't the case. At the end of the video, I did an update right before the video ended saying, hey, I reached out, gave a whole transcript and let everybody know that I did get my money back very quickly too. I figured this time, instead of just waiting to talk to them and adding that at the end of the video, I go ahead and just let everything hang out for a day and contact the people at Hertz and say, hey, here's what happened. I'm not really sure why you sent the plants like the coldest day of the year for basically all of us, especially they're in Ohio. So it was more than likely even colder there than it is here. Uh, but I also wanted to make sure to take some responsibility in the fact that I ordered the plants. I just, I didn't know. I didn't know they were going to send them out when it was this cold. I figured they'd wait because, you know, most places do. Most places don't ship things out when it's like eight degrees below zero outside. That's not usually a great idea. I got a response back very quickly, sent them a picture and there's a full refund for everything. I made sure to tell them that it looked like some of the plants have potential <laughs> They're not, not looking great, but a few of them have some potential. Still a far cry from anything I would spend money on, but some of the Syngoniums and one of the Ficus Pumulas looks like it might be okay. 
Then the back there are some Limezinger Xanthosomas. That's what I was really excited about too. And uh, I think a couple of them, maybe three of them are still kind of firm at the base and they still did a full refund and apologize. And I know some of y'all had reached out that you would place a Hertz order too because they're doing a 50% off sale uh, at the time. So I would imagine there are probably a lot of people getting some refunds right now. And good to know when you order from Hertz, no matter when you order from them, they're gonna ship those plants out right away, which is good to know. And I guess makes sense considering how much the shipping is. I've done other videos about Hertz's shipping, compared them between ordering from them directly or through Walmart. It is far cheaper if you're gonna order from Hertz to do it through Walmart or from one of the other sites they sell from. This was $100 to have these shipped here. Because see, they were 50% off on Hertz's website, but on Walmart's website, they weren't. So I had almost an identical cart on each website and then went with Hertz because they had more of what I wanted and it was only gonna be like another eight bucks by the time I had spent a very long time sorting things out to try and get the best deal possible. Uh, $100 shipping is a lot. It was expedited but expedited and standard were the same cost. That's why I went with expedited. I used to work in the fish industry, tropical fish, aquarium fish. It was cheaper to ship those, to ship bags of water that had fish in them stuffed inside of a styrofoam cooler with either a heat pack or a chill pack inside of a box shipped overnight. It was generally per box, which wasn't often done per box, but you can do it at home if you're ordering fish for your aquariums. It's usually $39.99 to like $70 to have a box of water overnighted to your house. <laughs> In this, a hundred bucks and a beat up cardboard that had a couple of heat packs taped on the inside. Constructive criticism here, maybe throw in some bubble wrap around the inside of the package. That would help hold some of the heat in from the heat packs. Heat packs without bubble wrap or styrofoam or preferably really the radiant barrier insulation, it's not really insulation, but you know, the shiny foil bubble wrap essentially. It makes a huge difference with a heat pack, but just having a couple of them taped inside of a cardboard box really isn't going to do much. And even aside from that, some of these plants were completely smashed underneath the larger plants. So overall, not the best shopping experience I've ever had from Hertz. I will still order from them again at a more appropriate time of year. That is when it's not gonna be below freezing outside. That would be probably the best way to do things moving forward. This is, this is bad. Here's what I care about. I got a swift reply, a refund and an apology. I don't really care much about the apology. The main thing is that we make up for lost time and lost money. And like I said, I have to take some responsibility here because I placed the order knowing that there was a cold front moving in, just thinking that they wouldn't send them because you know, they're in Ohio. I've had much worse experiences. I ordered from another pretty popular plant company whose name I won't even say. A few years ago, I did do a video on it and they sent a box of plants out when it was freezing cold. And it said on their website that they wouldn't do that. Like it specifically said, that they would check the weather before shipping things. The plants arrived just looking terrible, just mush, and they basically were like, okay, well, cut them back, and here's what you can do to try and get them looking good again. I was like, oh, no, absolutely not. For one, this is a place where their plants were fairly expensive, and two, I'm not paying money for plants that look like garbage. That's insane. Never got a refund from them, and never have ordered from them again, and I have never spoken their name <laughs> into the social media atmosphere since then. They were rude and condescending and I was not in the wrong with that order because they had said on their website that they wouldn't ship plants out when it was that cold and they did. It's not the case here with Hertz. They're friendly, quick to reply, quick to refund, and I typically really like the plants that I get from them. They have a really good selection. There's some wonky stuff going on with the website with how they label certain things. Some things are called rare, but are not even close to being rare. But they have a selection of things that I can't typically find at the nurseries, at least this time of year, because this time of year, most of the nurseries aren't even opened around here. So here's the plants. <laughs> we want to do a plant haul. Do you want me to go through what I have here? I can make it very brief. The majority of what I have here are plants that I wanted to put into some terrariums. And, uh, well, that's, that's not going to happen now. They have a great selection of terrarium plants. There are a couple of ficus pumulas. There's one. It, 
that one's toast. This one right here, it still has some potential, <laughs> kind of. Needs a cutback, but that one will probably be fine. Two mini pink Fetonias, which, um, yeah, that's what those look like. Very crunchy. How those are going to do, where's the other one? Over here. Sorry, it was just one of the mini pink Fetonias. The other one was just a white veined Fetonia. A lot of begonias. I love miniature begonias. They're fantastic in terrariums. Those did not handle the cold well at all. I'll be trying again for the begonias. We, we don't need to go through the begonias. Begonia compacta, tiny pink. This one right here is called the Felicia variety miniata. You could even see the tag. It doesn't matter. There's nothing to show you because it's just, it's a pot full of crunch. What do we have here? Another compacta. That's, no, no hope for that one. This tiny pink still has some firmness to it. So I'm going to set it aside. It might be okay. The Fetonias, I will cut them back and absolutely drown them in water and see what they do. I have a couple of miniature ivies here. I love miniature ivies. There's the, this is the dumbest plant haul ever, Peter Pan. See, it just has tiny little leaves. Neat one. And then a variegated Peter Pan, basically. It's called Mini Easter. Uh, Peter Pan is actually looking better now than it did yesterday. So I'm gonna say that one still has potential. This needs to be cleaned up. And then way down in there, on the inside, the Mini Easter, which is just the variegated one, there's something going on in there. So I think that one might have a future, we will see. I already talked about that one. Another one of those tiny pink begonias. It has some firmness on the inside, so maybe it'll be all right, I doubt it. This one, I was so excited about this one. Oncidium Twinkle, it's the pink one, pink profusion. Oncidium Twinkle, it's an orchid and they have the cutest little pseudo bulbs. You see that? So cute, especially when they're nice and green and not squishy and dying. There are maybe three in here that might be okay. The rest of these are going to need to be cut out and treated. That's going to be a whole thing. You have to cut them out and then hit them with a peroxide rinse that out and then make sure to hit the areas that you cut with some cinnamon, just like a, on a wet Q-tip cotton swab, get in there and dab that cinnamon in there to help dry that out, to help prevent infection. The orchids are not, they grow so slow. I was gonna say they're not the best for having to do recovery projects with, which is true to an extent. It's more just a matter of patience. Everything over here, if I give it a cutback and some fertilizer, they should be just fine. I'm still gonna hit everything with a fungicide. I'm gonna talk about, a, I have a whole arsenal of various things that can be used here in a situation like this when you need to give the plants some unexpected TLC. It's not ideal, right? It's not what I would like to be doing with the plants. The Syngoniums, those were something I was excited to get. They actually look the best out of everything. This is for some reason labeled Alocasia Pink Perfection. I don't know why. It's a Pink Perfection Syngonium. It says nice pink foliage. That one should be fine, needs some cleanup, but it looks the best out of everything. And then Pink Fairy Syngonium, which, uh, yeah, not great, but there's some life in there. So I have to cut the dead stuff out. And the same thing with this one, this is another one of those Pink Fairies. Not looking great, but I think it will bounce back and recover. What I'm really bummed about are these Lime Zinger Xanthosomas. Lime Zinger Xanthosomas are one of my favorite of the tropical plants. They have a nice shaped leaf to it. It has a deep cut in the sinus and it's just a beautiful shade of green. And they retail up here when I see them in nurseries in six inch containers, for like $18.99 to $29.99. Always up in there. These were only seven bucks a piece. What a deal. <laughs> just imagine if they, if they had survived the shipping. Oh, there it is. These are the ones I think still have some potential. I'm going to get them unwrapped. I figured I should let y'all have a look at them. <laughs> unwrapped before I finish up the video. Not that it makes that much of a difference. Things are still mushy and crunchy over here. I am going to talk about what I do with recovering plants, <laughs> bed shipping, but I think that it would be better to do that in a separate video because I would like to do this in a way where I can clean them up, do the whole thing, and then let a couple of weeks pass and show what kind of progress has been made all in one video. I also don't want to jumble too many things into one title. That makes things too complicated. But uh, just a rundown of what I would do if you were curious or what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in and cut back everything that doesn't look good. So on this begonia, for example, you can see there's still some firm, kind of firm, 
green growth down there, I'm gonna be cutting down into that. Not right above it, but into it. Get all the nasty stuff out. It's a good idea to have some hydrogen peroxide laying around, perhaps some rubbing alcohol, isopropyl to clean up the instruments that you're using between plants, and neem oil, whether that be something like actual cold pressed neem oil, neem max, and cinnamon. I'm out of cinnamon. Cinnamon is really good for drying out your cuts. Just put a little bit, just a little dab. That'll help dry out wherever you've made your cuts and seal things up. Don't want to use too much. Some plants don't always respond to it very well. With the orchids, it's more important. Hydrogen peroxide can spray this on moldy parts. So when I cut back some of these xanthosomas up here, I know I'm going to encounter some mold. I saw some on one of the ones back there. So you can hit that mold with the hydrogen peroxide. It doesn't need to be in a spray bottle. This is just what I have laying around. It's also useful to use as a flush. That's something else to keep in mind in a situation like this. There's probably going to be potential for some root rot. Some people will say to repot the plants immediately. I'm not one of those people, though it does depend on the plant. If it's a cactus or a succulent, I would repot them right away. But otherwise, I like to get them cleaned up and give them a few days to rest and then go ahead and move on to a repot to get the nasty swell that's in there out. The swell may look okay, but chances are there's going to be some die off in the roots. And when that happens, and that's just more organic material to decay and could end up combating some other issues further down the road. It's generally like a quarter of a cup mixed with like four cups of water as a flush. You can also do flushes with neem. I think that's an easier way to go. Oh, and copper bait, I should have, this is, I like this more than anything on the table. It should have been out here with the neem and everything. A good spray of copper based fungicide on the plants is a great idea. After everything's been cut up and cleaned up, this stuff, it works great. But the neem also has antifungal and some antibacterial properties. This again for your instruments, this for molds. And then there is going to be a potential for fungus gnats. And with fungus gnats, I like to use just a bacillus thuringis powder. You mix it with water, water it with the plants, then move the plants, whatever conditions are appropriate for them. Warmer is going to be better. I have a swell thermometer over here just because I want to double check, make sure that my temperatures were okay. It's already dropping down. Soil temperatures are in the mid 70s. That's good. That means that I should get some quick bounce back from the plants. Stay on top of fertilizing. It's very important at this point. I would start with a root stimulating fertilizer and then move to an all purpose fertilizer, just following your normal all purpose fertilizer schedule, which is generally like once a month. You want to get them to push out new growth. That's a very broad summary of everything. I'll get more in depth and in detail to each of the different things later in another video, but I think this is good for now. Thanks for hanging out. Comment down below, say hi, I love talking to everybody. I was saying a lot of the plants still have some potential, but they are far from anything that I would pay money for. So I appreciate that even though I probably should not have placed that order, I want to take responsibility for that. I don't think I should have, but now I know they still refunded everything. Communication was quick, very pleasant. I will still order from Hertz. I like their plants, like their selection. They're one of the few places where I can find the mini begonias and the mini syngoniums. Aside from what happened this time, every other shopping experience I've had with them has been good. Uh, so yeah, I would be more upset. This was a fail on both sides here. I screwed up too. Partially my brain gets scrambled this time of year because I'm also placing orders for perennial type plants and those sellers especially really big ones like Burpee and Parks and Wayside, they don't ship plants out until like May for where I live. So I'm still listed as zone six, even though I'm now zone seven. I think Burpee plant orders from them wouldn't arrive until mid to late May, which is one of the reasons I don't order from them because at that point I've been to the nurseries and I've picked out most of my annuals and I don't want to wait to see if they're going to send what I order, right? Cause you just, you never know if the plants are still going to be in stock. That's not as much of an issue as it used to be. Inventory management's gotten much better with the exception of Sunshine Greens, right? Some of these will be okay. Some of them, probably not. I get them cleaned up. Like I said, we'll talk about that later. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye. <laughs> That's embarrassing.